Welcome to my mono game tutorial. Uh, this tutorial series is specifically for people who already know C Sharp, or maybe you know a lot about programming in general. Uh, this is not for the average person who doesn't know anything about coding at all. Uh, I suggest you go and learn more and come back, or you go and find one of the many other tutorials on YouTube about mono game, uh, because Almost all of them actually teach you about coding and how to use the engine at the same time, which is actually why I'm making this series, is because I started off by making business software, and I knew a lot about coding and design and all that stuff, and I wanted to get into game development, but all these tutorials were very slow because they were explaining very basic things like what a method is, what a string is, things like that. So. If you already know quite a bit about programming, this is the tutorial for you. So with all that being said, let's get started. Uh, the first thing, of course, is downloading the Monogame engine. Uh, link will be in the description, uh, as well as time codes to specific uh, things I'll be teaching. So that way, if you already know how to do something, you can just skip ahead to a part in the video where maybe I'm um, talking about something you don't already know how to do. So uh, Mono Game is currently at version 3.6. Go ahead and download that. And uh, before you install it, make sure you have Visual Studio closed. Uh, Mono Game is compatible with Visual Studio, uh, you know, 2015, 2017. Uh, if you don't have any money, don't worry. You can always get Visual Studio Community, which is free, and it works just fine with that. And uh, so after you've downloaded and installed everything, um, we can just go ahead and start a new project. So if everything works fine, uh, you'll notice that in addition to uh, basic Windows Forms applications, uh, you'll have all these mono game options. I highly recommend you go with Mono game uh, cross-platform project, and that's because, as you can see here, it's for Windows, Mac, and Linux, uh, and it uses OpenGL. And this will make it very easy to port your game to PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and I believe that PlayStation Vita is still uh, supported as well. So yeah, you want to pick this one. If for some reason uh, you pick this one, uh, don't worry. For the most part, you can kind of copy paste your code, import the assets and all that good stuff into a cross-platform project. Uh, in addition to all that, cross-platform projects uh, makes your game more compatible with a wider uh, array of game pads rather than just a 360 game pad. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, we're just going to name our project uh, tutorial game and go ahead just start up that project and when you do you'll have all this stuff over here don't worry we'll get around to some of this stuff later but for now our main concern is this right here we'll always start with a single class it'll always be called game one we can change the name of that later and this inherits game, which is part of the XNA framework. Uh, Mono game is based off XNA, which was originally for developing Xbox 360 games, but now it can be, you know, used for all sorts of things, as I explained earlier, porting to all sorts of different consoles. Uh, so when you first start a project, you'll get a lot of uh, comments. Now go ahead and read these comments if you'd like. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete them because I know pretty much what's what with this engine at this point. I don't really need them personally, and I'd like to just make the code look a bit cleaner and easier to read for everyone at home following this tutorial. So I'm just going to quickly go through and uh, delete this stuff because uh, we don't need it at the moment. Uh, I'll also zoom in a bit so you can see what I'm doing a little better. All right, so let's get started. Uh, if we boot up the game uh, without actually doing anything, we can see what a blank game looks like. 
It's in a small window and it's just the color blue. And uh, the first thing we're going to do is actually change the size of this window, therefore changing the resolution of the game. We're going to start off by typing in graphics dot uh, preferred back buffer width and we're going to set that to 1280 and we're going to do something very similar and set the back buffer height equal to 720. So this is standard resolution for a 720p game uh, when you want it to be in the widescreen 16 by 9 aspect ratio, that's what you want to set it to. And then we're just going to do graphics dot apply changes. And you want it to be under initialize and after the base initialization. So we're just going to start that. And as you can see, the window size is now standard uh, 720p. And uh, the monitor I'm recording with is 1080p, so that's why it's taking up uh, this exact amount. So now that that's done, uh, we're going to do something that's a bit complicated off the bat, but it's good to set the groundwork for the game, because it would be terrible to program uh, some gameplay and then have this happen to you. And what I'm talking about is having different resolutions. So as I'm sure you're aware, you can change uh, the resolution of a game uh, for most PC games by just going to the settings and changing it. And the way we're going to do this is by using something called uh, render targeting. And what this will do is it will make the game run at a consistent resolution regardless of the size of the window and still let us see the entire game. So uh, we're just going to start off real quick by doing a render target 2D and we're just going to call it render target just like that and now we're going to have to prepare the render target under the load content. Load content will get more to this later but this is basically where you load your images music, all the all the graphics and all that stuff, you'll load it here. But this is also where we're going to be preparing the render target. So we'll reference that that we just made equals new render target 2D. And it can take a lot of different arguments. We're going to first reference the graphics device right here. Then we're going to set what we want the game to essentially always be. We always want it to be, let's say, uh, 1920 by 1080, which is the standard 16 by 9 resolution for, you know, any game. So that will mean that we're targeting 1080p. And uh, of course, this does take more arguments. There's plenty of different things you can add. But for now, this is all we really need is to set it up like this and uh, load content is called as soon as you boot up the game all right so now we're going to our draw method the draw method is essentially where everything is rendered everything is drawn uh, you typically don't want to do too many calculations down here and i'll explain why later it has to do with frame rate and uh, lower end computers how they run games or maybe, you know, lower end graphics cards, things like that. Uh, it's a bit complicated, but we'll get to explaining that later. But for now, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna do some stuff under draw. Uh, actually first, before I totally forget, <laughs> we're gonna make a float. It's gonna be called scale. And uh, we're gonna set that equal to zero point four we're gonna put that in five times f to make sure that it's a float uh, we're actually gonna make it public so we can access it better later there we go and now under draw scale equals 
one F divide by, and then we'll have 1080 F graphics, graphics device, and then viewport dot height. So this will this will help the game for something in a bit. Uh, we're now gonna go ahead and reference graphics device. Then set the render target, which will be our render target specifically. And there we go. It's all set up. Let's uh, do this. So clear is a, uh, it's essentially every time it calls draw, it will clear everything before it draws something else. That way you don't have graphics just constantly overlaying with each other. And uh, the default color is that blue color that we saw earlier in that window. And this here is typically where we want to start a sprite batch, which I'll explain a bit more later. But for now, we'll just do sprite batch dot begin and after that sprite batch dot end and in between these two lines of code is where you'll specifically tell the game what images you want to render and where you want to render them but after you uh, prepare that sprite batch we'll have to set the render target back to null so set render target to null. And we pretty much want to just do this again. So we'll just copy paste. And then we begin a second sprite batch. Let's see, dot begin. Sprite batch dot end. And in here is where we draw the render target. So we'll reference the sprite batch that is started with this line right here, dot draw. And we'll be using the render target. We will set this to vector two dot zero, which is the top left corner of the screen. Uh, a vector two is basically like coordinates uh, the vector2 will take only floats, and vector2.0 is basically like a default position on the on the screen. We're going to go ahead, type in null, then color dot white. When you uh, when you set something's color as white, it will basically not change at all. Uh, you can pretty much colorize different sprites and images by selecting a different color, but white will basically just render it as is. Next, we're going to do 0f, then another vector2.0, and here's where we put our scale. This is where we're going to be scaling the graphics. Then we'll set the, the sprite effects. There we go. We're going to set it to none. Sprite effects will let you flip images uh, either horizontally or vertically. And then 0f one last time. And there we go. So now everything you have between these two lines will be rendered but it will be scaled and adjusted so that no matter the size of the actual window, it will always be running in 1080p or whatever resolution you decide to run the game at. Now that all that is out of the way, we should actually go ahead and draw something so we can see how the render targeting works. So it's very important to note that when you import any kind of content into Monogame, you want to use the pipeline tool. 
and you'll you'll have to go over to the content folder and we have the special file type the mono game content go ahead and double click on that now by default it might not open the pipeline tool but it is uh it should be located in program files x86 you should be able to find it and uh, set it to default so it always opens this kind of file. So we're going to right click on content and we can add an existing item. In this case I'm going to go ahead and grab stickman. Uh, we can copy the file to the directory or we can just link to it. I don't think you should link to it because if uh, if you want to copy the project over to somewhere, then it's not going to be able to access that anymore. So let's go ahead and copy it over. Then we should rebuild and uh, just save real quick. So now we have Sick Man, which is just a simple image. And first things first, we're going to have to create a Texture 2D. So Texture 2D is basically any kind of 2D image. It doesn't have to be an actual texture on a 3D object. It can be any kind of 2D image. And we're just going to call it uh, Stick Man, because why not? And next, we have to load Stick Man. We can go ahead and do that right here by referring back to it. We can use content dot load. We specify that is it is a uh, texture two D, and then we give it the name, which in this case is just stick man, as we can see here. You don't have to put dot png. That's not necessary. Uh, I it may be case sensitive, so careful that. And if, for instance, you have a folder, let's say I make a folder, call it images, uh, you would do images slash stickman. And that's how you can organize all your assets better in the pipeline. And now that we've done that, we can go ahead down to draw and simply draw it. So it's just draw, you tell it what 2D uh, image to use. In this case, it's just stick man. Then we set the coordinates. We can just do vector 2.0 for now. And then we just use color dot white. And that will just draw the image as is without any kind of colorization. Now let's go ahead and run that. And we can see we have a sick man right there. Uh, you can ignore the fact that the white background is not transparent. That has to do with the image itself, not the actual engine or your coding. And you can see how he's a lot smaller than he actually is in the image file. That's because within this 720p window we have open, uh, everything inside here is actually 1080p because of the render targeting. Now, if for some reason you were to put 720f right here, it would target 720 and it would show it as is. And that's going to be it for this tutorial. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, I know the only thing we did is we talked about uh, resolutions and target rendering, and I showed you how to draw a very simple image. But this is very important base work for making a game. And next time I'll be explaining a lot more about the engine, how the engine works, uh, the differences between update and draw, uh, how you can separate frame rates, how you can make things move around, all that kind of stuff. So uh, subscribe for more tech tutorials, all that kind of stuff, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.